Hey guys, welcome back, Gay for Games, and this is Katanarama V2. Electric uh, Boogaloo. <laughs> yep, and this is also episode 10 of our PvP showcase, um, where you guys were asking for a little bit more melee, sort of centric build, and this is what we're giving you. Yeah, so this is like a completely not Wrecked. broken class, but this class is like by far one of the most fun that we've made. Not only this, not only that, this is the only class that we've made so far that's under 20%, and it's unbelievably optimised for fun. Yeah, like, this is a build that you're going to be able to just, like, take the piss and, like, roll around pretty much everything they've got. You should have hit them there. Just so you guys are aware, I've not seen any of this footage, basically. I mean, I might have seen one or two clips, but I've not seen the majority of it. You have played the build, though. I have played the build, yeah. I've made my own variation of it as well, and... Man, I've been having so much fun with just weapon switch in the middle of fights. It's really good. So, the thing that really surprised me about this build is... It is kind of like a combination between the first Katana build and the Pyromancy build. Now, the first katana build used the Chaos Blade, and I was convinced that that was the best katana. And it, and it probably is, but the Yuchi katana is actually amazing for the stats that you need to invest for it. It's yeah, it's it's like nine, it's 10 strength, 16 dex, when the Chaos Blade is 12 strength, 25 dex. So, yeah. I mean, and you much get the less same moveset. Investment. Yeah, you do, you get the same moveset. Um, also, the fact is, I mean, obviously, you've got to use less damage because of the fact that it's got lower stat requirements, but if you're willing to accept that, then you should be fine with the Uchi Katana. Yeah, You totally. just have to get used to maybe getting that extra hit or two in there. So, the good thing about this build is, again, you know, the under 20% thing. And the high adaptability as well, if yeah. I'm right. 35? So, yep. Well, it's not that it's 32, it's 110 agility. Oh, yeah, because we've got three achievement slots, so we've actually got a little bit of stamina from there. It's actually five achievement slots. Three spells, whatever, fuck yeah. you. <laughs> but yeah, so we've got a little bit of stamina from attunement, um, as well as the, the adaptability. But basically, you just want to go to agility, you want your agility to be about 110, because that's where it maxes. Now, what you just saw there was one of my favourite combos with the build, is the backstep attack, heavy, heavy. So that means you do a, like two stabs and a swing. If you can get with the first stab, a lot of the times you'll be able to follow up with the next two hits. It does mm -hmm. a decent amount of damage and it's stylish as fuck. And that combo also works with great swords as well, by the way. Does it? Running attack, heavy, heavy. It works with the claymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it works with the Mastodon sword, which is just ridiculous. Um, sorry, I'm going to correct myself. Um, I said the agility is 110. That's where it maxes out. It doesn't. You can get to 120 agility. But 110 is when you really get the diminishing returns. Yeah, 110 is the sweet spot for getting your shield up quicker, for getting your roll a little bit better and your actions a little bit smoother. So, so contrary to what uh, I used to think and what people do think, although adaptability is probably the least important stat, it's not um, unimportant like resistance was. Yeah, uh, you could you could easily go through the full game without resistance, no problem. Adaptability is at least going to help you. Yeah, but Resistance didn't do enough to make it a, a good choice anyway. But adaptability does because of the, the additional like the roll speed and the, the yeah. shield raising frames is very good by the way, you get a, you get you raise your shield on a little bit quicker, which is great. Uh, not only that, the under twenty percent weight category it is very noticeable once you start playing in under twenty percent. The main difference that I've noticed is your response time for going into the roll is probably at halved by what it feels like. So when you press the button you roll much faster than you know over 20 percent yeah so it's actually it's actually quite recommended if you can get under 20 percent you can look at this to. guy in the butterfly like he's just dipping and dodging it see because he's under 20 percent i'm that right there actually you get quite a nice far roll oh so yeah by all means um definitely go to under 20 percent if you're going a pure caster you want under 20 percent because one roll can create enough distance for you to get a cast in oh totally so totally. like under 20 percent with a high adaptability if you're going to go a caster definitely uh, you don't even need that you might as well just go glass cannon at that point pile it all into fucking whatever stack you're using to cast and then get your cast speed up and go to town with a 20 percent build totally now Another thing that I like about this build is the fact that it's using the Hexos Hood. Now, I didn't use the Hexos Hood for the last Pyromancy build, and I, at that point I didn't even know that it gave you an extra cast in the things. So, or one extra in each Faith and Int. Yeah, that as well. So it gives you more damage for Pyromancy because it scales off both. Ma Marge, I mean, fuck it. It's, it's like very... two damage. Right, I'm sure you'll notice if you go to 99, 99 Faith, I'm sure you'll notice a damage and difference <laughs> with Forbidden Sun at that point, Tony. But yeah, um, I mean, get, being able to get the two casts of Forbidden Sun with pretty much, you know, no investment is fantastic, really. And I would have actually liked to have played that on the previous yeah, Pyramid yeah. build. Yeah, they've been good. 
But um, yeah, I mean, uh, it really is a good build uh, down to the fact you're very hard to hit. The katana's got a very good and very quick move set. Totally. Um, especially the fact that you can go run an attack and then you can hit them. Well, you you can chain out the run attack with the lights and it will hit them twice as well as the heavies. Not only that, in their screen when you use the run attack, you're at the other side of the arena and you've hit them with it. So yeah, um, because it's just it's got an infinite forward range basically. Yeah. <laughs> like. Well, you did get him there that time, but like there's in quite his, a lot. In of his time. screen, I was still in my, in my little cubicle. Thing. In his, yeah, in his screen, he was still waiting for the gate to rise. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like the katana is very good. Also, see if you miss the first attack of the katana, just swing again because oh, yeah. the, the follow up has amazing tracking. Like they, you just hit them. What the fuck was he doing? I, I don't know. Is that it good, must have been good lagging. Though. It must have been lagging because he sort of turned. And so then again, another thing to point out is that pretty much the only pyromancies that you need in this game are Forbidden Sun, Flame Weapon if you need a buff, and uh, Combustion. Great Combustion. Yeah. Oh no, I agree with you. Like my PvP build, I only use two spells, and that is Forbidden Sun and Combustion, just for the fact that I'll use Forbidden Sun to punish them if they heal because it's quick as shit and it totally. hits for about 600, 700 minimum. And then of course I've got Combustion because if you backstab someone, then Combustion they just die. They can't get out of it. Like it's, it's almost that, like you, you've got maybe like a one in fifteen chance of I've only ever escaped a combustion backstab once. Yeah. Once, and that's happened plenty of times. I'm not shit. It just happens a lot, right? Uh, I'm not shit. Look, when you go from playing under twenty to playing seventy, you notice a difference. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm not obviously you're using the penal gauntlet to just get more, um, you know, more, more fire damage. damage. Yeah. Really, if you don't if you don't have any stats invested into um, you know like faith or intelligence, you kind of really want the penal gauntlet because otherwise pyromancy does do a little underwhelming amount of damage. Yeah, the penal gauntlet gives it quite a nice buff, like a really yeah, good buff. Yeah, it's like seven point five percent, which is completely justifiable to use, and it means that your forbidden sons are always going to hit like a truck. Yeah, which is some people would have a problem with that. Um, myself, not really, because I find Forbidden Sun quite easy to dodge now that I'm used to it. Yeah, but, but it's it's always good for punishing people, you know, you'll get hit with it now and then. Yeah, but it's the same with everything else. If you miss time it, you're getting hit with it, and you're going to tank the full damage, and it's usually going to be pretty something spectacular if you're trying to roll through it. Totally. It's going to be some good damage, but... I mean, if you get hit with Forbidden Sun, it's not, it's not, it doesn't usually kill you in one shot, but... You know, you can you can get away with it. So this build, unlike our other builds, or well, most of our other builds, is like completely not gimmicky. So you kind of you need to be skilled to use it. The Master Than Sword one wasn't gimmicky. Yeah, that's like I said, most of the builds. So yeah, you need to be skilled to use it, but the build is easy that for tracking. for being skilled with. If that makes sense, because of the under twenty percent optimization, the good weapon, you know, you can you can be good with the build. Yeah, if you want a pure me if you want to start working on just pure melee, this is probably where you want to start. Yeah. Um, just purely because it's quick, uh, it gets you used to dodging in time. You know, you're able to learn like how like. So this is how, this is how you don't play that. this build. All right, yeah, you just you well, you don't run into a lingering flame. <laughs> so you that's that's pretty much you don't play any build by running into lingering flame. So here's a little montage of um, just quick kills. And another thing to mention is I'm triple stacking uh, things which increase my stamina regen which increases obviously my overall speed Coranthia and Green Blossom and Rose Shield or whatever it's called Blossom Shield Blossom so, Shield yeah yeah and it really went when you go from not having all of that stuff to having all this stuff like the stamina recovery is just insane especially under 20% which is already quick as shit but um yeah so that's pretty much it I believe yeah that's um, this it. is the stats oh by the way um, now usually on a melee build I would like to run the Avalon but instead we're going to use Forbidden Sun from now on because Forbidden Sun the Avalon's 25 strength and something like 15 decks Forbidden Sun is the southern ritual band of pyromancy flame yeah so there's no need to to use the Avalon so, anymore obviously here's the stats it's got the dingy set got the blossom kite shield Yuch katana um, 35 faith 35 health 35 stamina 36 equipment load so I can get under 20%, 25 attunement, basic stats to use the shield and the sword, 12, and 16. 32 adaptability. Obviously I'm only using the three pyromancies but you don't need any else. No, you, you could go with just combustion alone. Uh, yeah, and you can use whatever items you want. On, on the rings of the basic four you've got uh, stamina, equipment load, stamina regen and life. Exactly. And since this is the outro, um, have you got anything to add before I before I give them their announcement? No, but um, obviously rate, comment, subscribe because it helps us out a lot. Mm -hmm. And add us on Skype, add us on PSN, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. And if you want to see the, the last episode, which seemed to 
went down a treat with people surprisingly then yeah, quick, the left box yeah quite a lot of views in the first few days it was up setting at very high views for the first few days and the next build is another what you know one of our we like we like to show you all the broken shit that people have came up with we want this sort of this this to be the kind of series where you go oh he's uploaded what are people playing you know what's the flavor of the month well, what's so, what's the what's the current bs meta yeah, so, at the minute so currently you've, uh, you know you can probably see, we're not going to give away the name but, but it's, it's you can see what the next video is yeah. going to be now the announcement we have is that literally as soon as we stop talking and you stop hearing our voices, we will be recording the guide, the first part of the Dark Souls Finally 2 done, Ultimate guys. Guide. We did it! We did it! We're here! But yeah, so we'll be getting things betwixt the medulla out of the way. It's probably pretty quick, we may have time to get another one, but anyway, we'll, uh, since we're actually coming to the end of the video, you guys will probably see the first part of the guide in a few days' time. Um, and then you'll probably see parts of the guide every couple of days, possibly in every every other day if we get enough time to do it. But yeah. it is coming, guys. It's happening. You've done it. You've stuck with us long enough to get your guide. Not only that, we're we're, we're coming up on five thousand subs. Thank every single one of you for all your feedback, all your comments. We really couldn't have done it without you, bro. Well, um, we'll let you guys go, and this is finished. So we're gonna start the guide. So we'll see you guys later. See you guys.